Hey, it's Jay Goffner with Arbor Jetty College L. I'm back in my home state of Iowa, standing in front of this big 40-inch uh, burr oak tree that we talked about last summer. So last summer we were here talking and identifying uh, burr oak blight. And if you haven't watched the video that I did last summer, it was called Dealing with Burr Oak Blight. Uh, I encourage you to go back and watch that uh, video. That'll give you a little history on what we've been talking about. Uh, so today we're here to do the trunk injection with Propozole. We're going to walk through that whole process. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to dive in this tree just a little bit and just talk about what's going on. So if you look at our canopy right now, it, this tree is just starting to leaf out. Uh, here we are in the month of May. So let's dive in just a little closer. We'll take a closer look at this branch here behind me. All right, so we're at this same tree branch that we were at last summer, and we can tell that these leaves are just starting to come on. Um, the, the buds have broken open, the leaves are starting to come on. Leaves are about the size of my thumbnails. Um, pretty small, they're just coming on. Everything looks pretty good. Uh, but when we look at this branch here, we follow up a little bit. One thing we wanna talk about today are these leaves from last year that are still on. And so when you drive around the neighborhood in burr, oak, blight infested areas, a lot of times you'll see these leaves hanging on the tree right through the winter time. And uh, the, the pathogen, Tabacchio ioensis, remains on that leaf petiole right through the winter time. And then it reinfects the new leaves as they're forming, uh, especially during the spring months. And so this is a leaf spot disease that is spread by wind and rain. And so when we get rainy springs or windy springs, uh, this pathogen can really uh, have a good year. And we are set up for a year like that right now. It's been uh, quite rainy. Uh, we We've had quite a bit of on and off rain for the last several weeks uh, coming out of a three-year drought. And so this is probably a good year to be uh, monitoring this tree to show the differences that we can do with a fungicide treatment for sure. So we're going to monitor this tree and this branch moving forward, but I just wanted to come and come and come in close and get a good look at this before we move on to our trunk injection today. All right, so we're down here at the base of the tree and we're getting ready to set our injection sites. Let me show you what I'm looking for and why the injection sites really matter on these bur oak trees. Let me tilt the camera down, we'll get a closer look. So when I look for my injection sites, I'm looking for my sites as low to the ground as I possibly can. So on the root flares, half inch to an inch from the ground, I really don't want my, my plug setting to be any more than about six inches up off the ground and above. All this material up here is really thick bark, and you're gonna go through a lot of different layers of bark and cambium before you get to that good xylem tissue. And the xylem tissue, the higher up on the tree you go, is a lot narrower. And so down here, low to the ground, we're gonna be able to access that vascular tissue, and it's gonna act like a funnel, and it's gonna narrow in as it goes up the tree. So we want our injection sites just to low to the ground as I can. So let's set a couple here. We'll set them and we'll get a close up and see what they look like. So here's a really good rip flare right here. And again, down low to the ground, we'll set our drill to a 90 degree angle to that surface. And I'm gonna let the drill bit just kinda chew through the bark first and find that xylem tissue. So right there, it hit that xylem tissue. So we're gonna go in and out, and then we're gonna set this arbor plug. Right there, it's a nice kinda deadening sound. I'll give it one more little tap, and we'll call that good. And so if we kind of zoom down in here and get nice and close, hopefully you can see it. There we go. You can see our, a properly set arbor plug. With just a little, it's pretty deep. You want a little bit of xylem tissue on the outside of that plug. Low to the ground as you possibly can. All right, so here we are at the tailgate and we're ready to mix up. So we've got our, our F-Series kit. The F-Series is what we want to use for this application. We've got our propozole, and we've got some triage R10 to go along with it. So let's talk the math, and let's talk the uh, rates. So on a large bur oak like this, it has a really big canopy. We want to be at a full 10 milliliters per diameter inch. And if you look at an oak tree like this, and it has a, 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 a good size dbh tree but maybe the canopy is not quite as big it doesn't have a lot of branch structure and it doesn't have a lot it might be a real tall tree with a smaller canopy in that situation i'll back the rate down to maybe eight mils and we want to avoid a little phytotoxicity so propoconazole 
uh, the active ingredient propozole can cause some phytotoxicity on these baroques. And it's more prevalent later in the year when it's warmer, which is why we do it early spring. You really want to avoid those hot temperatures for sure. And that's why I really like to do this in the month of April and May. Once I hit about Memorial Day here in the Midwest, I'm going to be done with the propozole treatments. We're just going to hold off uh, until the following year and we'll encourage homeowners to, to take advantage of the shortstop applications during the growing season. So, uh, so that's the rate we want to use. So we're going to go at 10 mils per diameter inch. This is a 40 inch tree. So we need 400 milliliters of propozole for this tree. And because propozole is a large molecule, we do need to dilute it with some water to help with the uptake. And I like about two parts water, one part propozole. Um, I'll go a little higher on the water if the uptake is really good and spread it out a little bit more. I'm okay with that, but sometimes that's not always the most practical solution. So as a general rule of thumb, two to one is more than enough. And so that's what we're gonna do today. On this tree, we had a 40 inch tree, and I also want my equipment to work for me as far as injection sites. And so I try to take tree diameter divided by two and make the equipment work for us. In this case, uh, we would want approximately 20 injection sites. Well, the F-Series kit has a hex port of six, and so it has six injection sites on, on one manifold, and then we can double it up and add the expander and go to 12. So we wanna work in increments of six. Like, let's not make our, our work any harder than it has to be. So in this case, I'm gonna go with 18. I found 18 really good injection sites around the tree, feel like they're really spaced really well. Um, if this tree was a little bit larger, I probably would have bumped that up and probably would have went to, to 24 injection sites versus 18. But 18 is going to be good on this. So that being said, when we do our mixture, we really need to do some math and spread this solution out across um, the tree using different bottles or, or, or splitting it up basically into thirds. And so we're going to put one third of the dose into this bottle here and do six injection sites with it. And then I'm gonna come back and mix up the other two thirds and use the expander kit and do 12 injection sites uh, for the remaining two thirds of the tree. But for demonstration purposes and for this video, let's just keep things simple. We're gonna do uh, uh, six injection sites, one third of the tree. So at that 40, uh, or at a 40 inch tree times 10 milliliters per diameter inch, that's 400 milliliters divided by three, it's 133 milliliters of propozole for the first third of this dose. So let's start with that and we'll add this and we'll talk our way through it. So in the F-Series, we can take off this cap right here and add our funnel, which is awfully handy, right? And then we're going to add our propozole first. And so we're gonna measure this out. We're gonna do 133 milliliters. So I'm gonna kind of mark it with my thumb and fill 133. Perfect. You do wanna pour this kind of slow in here. It is kind of a thick product and it'll kind of bubble up on you a little bit if you're not careful. So don't, don't pour too fast. Let it drink down into the reservoir. Okay, and now we need to add some water to that. So uh, at 133, we want two parts water. So we need uh, 266 milliliters of water or something something kind of close to that. Went a little much, but that's okay. A little extra water doesn't hurt anything. The water is not the precise part the propozole is. Okay, so now we're gonna add the triage R10. We're gonna add that for two line chestnut bore. Uh, this tree was actually pretty healthy, looked pretty good, but as a precaution, we, we are going to add a little extra protection. So we're going to go at two mils per diameter inch, which is just a medium rate. I think that'll be more than adequate. And again, we're going to put about one third of that rate in, into here at the two mil rate. Ah, perfect. Okay, and so that's a nice thing to have when you've got two products that are tank mix compatible. So we've got our propozole and our water in here, and now we're just adding a little bit of the triage R10. We can add that to that mixture. And now we're ready to pressurize this bottle and we'll go to the tree and we'll start the injection process. All right, so I'm back at the tree. I've got all my injection sites uh, stuck, stuck in with our Viper needles. Our bottle is pressurized. And what I like to do is keep, have all the valves open on the tree with our master valve in the off position. And then I like to hold the bottle in my hand before I mount it in the ground somewhere. 
And that way when I open up this master valve, I can listen to here to make sure I don't have any uh, leakage from a bad plug set or some cracked bark or anything out of the ordinary. If there's a problem, I can shut it off very quickly from the master valve. So we'll go ahead and open up the master valve and start our injection process. There goes everything. And then I'm just gonna listen. And I don't hear anything, which is really good. That means we got some really good plug settings. So now we can take our bottle and we can set this in the ground. And we just kind of want to set it upright and make it square with the world. And now we can sit back and, and watch this go. All right, so that whole process took about 35 minutes. Again, really good uptake today. Uh, temperatures in the mid 60s, sun shining. Uh, so very happy with that. Uh, but this is one of those processes that you definitely don't want to start at like four o'clock in the afternoon. Please plan accordingly and plan for trees that might be a little slower uptake. And give yourself an opportunity uh, to allow that product to uptake. And give yourself time. So start this process, uh, you know, in the morning and, and plan accordingly. The key points on this whole process for the springtime treatments. Again, we're using Propozol and we're using uh, Triage R10 as a tank mix compatible product. Uh, for the two-line chestnut bore and we want to watch our rates and if it has a full big canopy we can go up to 10 mils per diameter inch and if the tree's lacking some branch structure to avoid that phytotoxicity let's back that rate down to about eight and communication is really key to this when it comes to phytotoxicity I promise you this conversation is a lot easier to have if you had to have ahead of time to the homeowner that, hey, phytotoxicity is but is potential risk with this product and it's not detrimental to the tree. And even a severe leaf drop situation, I've seen trees recover just fine. So don't panic if you do see a lot of leaf drop, but phytotoxicity usually occurs on the lower branches, the lower uh, little extremities. You might see a little bit of a curl and uh, that's okay. It'll grow out of it. Don't be too alarmed. And we're gonna be back at this tree again one more time for one more video. And we're gonna see the full results when this tree's at full canopy. And see this again in August. That'll be a full one year period from when we first visited this tree. All right, we are back at the same tree on June 4th. And let me show you the difference and why we recommend shortstop on these bur oak trees. Look over my shoulder and look at the color of this tree. This tree looks phenomenal. This is nice dark green tissue. You wouldn't even hardly recognize this tree from where we started uh, almost a year ago. All right, so we're right back at this same tree branch we've been looking at uh, since we started this process. And the reason we use shortstop is because look at the leaves on here. We have this nice glossy, thicky, waxy cuticle, nice dark green leaves. Um, very full tight branch structure um, you can see we're still putting on new growth this year maybe a little shorter than what it's been in years past but because we're redirecting that energy these these trees just look phenomenal um, as a comparison I walked across the street and uh, there's a park over here and I pulled off some leaves off of a tree that is untreated with shortstop and look at the color difference this this branch right here is off of a bur oak tree untreated with short stuff this is what all the ones at the park look like as far as color and look at the difference between short stop treated and untreated okay this is why short stop is setting you up for success on baroque blight here we are on june 4th and we're going to continue to monitor this tree right through the baroque season to see the difference thanks for watching everybody